God said, just hold on to it until I tell you what to do. We're hungry for something. And we're dying if we don't eat what God gives us. And we're also dying if we eat what God told us not to eat. We'll die also. So I would rather die hungry for the things of God than to die empty in hell with the devil who's deceived me. My point is this. He said he came to himself. When you and I, and I'm speaking of myself, when we begin to realize that we are hungry, not for the things of this world, not for the the desires of the flesh, but we are hungry and thirsty for the purpose and the fulfillment that God wants in our life. That's when we'll understand what it means to come to ourselves. The hardest thing it is for somebody to do is to be in subjection to somebody else. It's not a natural thing to do. It's not a natural way of of thinking. That's not the way we're really made. That's not the way we're wired. But yet, when we make ourselves, make ourselves ready. Josh, I thought about this last night. I thought about the other night. He said, I'm coming back for a church that has made themselves ready ready my God that's good where we'll make ourselves how do we do that because we will allow God to do what he wants to do in our life not what I want to do not what you want to do my flesh tonight I would have liked to go and see my little boy play ball I would have loved it I love my son but I as much as I love my wife and him but I don't love him more than I love God And I knew that I had to come here tonight because God wants you to know that there is a void that is there in our life that only God can fill. But thank God we know the one who has filled that void in our life. Will somebody give our God praise? But I told you I was going to get to the good part. The last part before I get to what God wants me to really tell you tonight He said, when you finally come to yourself, all of you, listen, every one of us, when we say that's not, that's not what God wants from our life, you know, you realize it, but you've already gone so far away when you realize it sometimes. Am I I getting through to anybody in here? You've already gone so far away, then you begin to realize it. One day Samson had said that, you know, he thought God was still there and he tempted him and he went on and he went farther and farther. And that day, finally when he got up and, he, and she said, Delilah, it was too late, said, Samson, the Philistines be upon thee. Here when we finally come to ourselves and to the realization that only God can fill the hole. You know, I was in here the other night, now I understood what it meant. I had a vision. I saw a big hole being dug, a big shovel. Matter of fact, it was this quick. It was like I could see the shovel, and then immediately there was a big hole. That's the way God did this. It just boom, boom, it was there. Anybody know what I'm talking about? When God, I mean, it's like a millisecond. But only God can feel that hole. I'm telling you right now. Because I have learned in my failures and in my sin and in my wrongdoings in life before I ever stood in a pulpit and even when I was saved, when I struggled with things in my life, I would come to one realization that this would never satisfy like God satisfies. As a matter of fact, it would leave me empty. It would leave me in despair. It would leave me on the outside. It would leave me like the prodigal brother Harold, far away from the one who had already delivered me, who had already called me, who had already saved me, praise God. And I would hear him whisper. He said, you're not a, this the hardest thing God's ever said. He said, you're not a child of the devil, son. You are my child. And it's time to come home. Hallelujah. Tonight it's time to come home. Tonight it's time to get on the road leading home. Listen to this preacher. It is time tonight to get it together. It is time to put on the full armor of God and to fight the good fight of faith. We're in a battle, church. 
And the Lord is on His way. He's warning the world. He's telling everyone. I don't know if you know about what happened. He shook Iran to the core yesterday with an earthquake, to the very core. Something happened in Syria, they said, as they began to bring in these new bombs and stuff to come against. He said there was a sandstorm that hit Syria that was of biblical proportions yesterday. The reason I know this is because I began to read yesterday and I didn't understand all of it. I did last night. One of the Psalms said that when God arises, His enemies will be scattered. And tonight I want you to know that we have an enemy. And God's getting ready to scatter the enemies of our life. In the hour that you and I live, you better hear this preacher. God is telling me to tell you, and He spoke to me first, it is time to come home. It is time to be ready and watching. We don't need to be far away from God. We don't need to be out in the world. We don't need to be running with the devil. We don't need to be living after the flesh. We need to be in the house of God serving the one who's about to call us to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who's about to take us home. If you believe it, will somebody say amen in this place? But my father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him. And remember he saw him coming. In all reality, it seemed like that really Brother Joshua thought about this, that he was coming back to the Father. But the minute he made the first step home, God became right into him and said, come now. My God, I want you to see it. You better come now. You're my child. I want you inside. I don't want you outside because the storm is brewing on the horizon. And famine is coming to the world like it has never, my God, come before. Night is coming. The light of the world will not be like it was as it has in times past. The Lord said to me the other day, so many people, they're rooted in death, they're rooted in darkness. I heard this preacher say something today and God said, that's not right. I I mean, I give give an account. I won't say who the priest on on, on radio is big known. And God said, that's not what I said. He said, I told him to repent. He said, that's what he said to him. He said, I told him to repent. In other words, this is what happened to the prodigal. He said, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Why am I living this way? Why am I doing these things? But then all of a sudden, he he said, you know what? I don't want to live this way anymore. Aren't you glad? He said, I don't want to do these things anymore. Somebody say hallelujah. And he said, I don't want to hold the hand of the devil anymore. And then he really came to himself. He said, I don't want to be in the darkness, hallelujah, anymore. So he said, I'm going home. It's time to come home. The father said, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and be married. But this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. I lost my dog once. I blame myself for it. It was way back in about 2007, 2008. I remember the night because I remember when I found him. I found him on a Sunday. I brought him in here into church when I was preaching. I put him right up here when I was preaching. I remember I searched for him for five days. I searched for him. I looked for him. I'd go out, and Jamie, remember, we'd drive everywhere. I'd get out of the car and just by faith begin to cry. And I remember in my bedroom one night, I was crying out to God. like I prayed as hard for that dog as I have for a human. Probably even harder. Because I felt guilty because you know what? Because I left the gate open. 
Let me tell you right now, don't leave the gate open in your life. Because you, if you do, you might slip out or something might slip in. But I remember the Lord telling me when I was in my bedroom, I can remember the very day, the very moment. He said, Mark, he's eating good in the neighborhood. And I said, Lord, he must be down here. What's that? What's that? Uh, he must be down here at Applebee's. That's what I thought. But see, God's still stretching my faith. It's a true story. I mean, this is what he said to me. I'll give him the count. He said this. He said he's eating good in the neighborhood. I said, my God, he's at Applebee's. I told my wife, she remembers. So I drove to Applebee's. And I said, I'm going to find him down there. No. So we pinned him up everywhere. We had his picture. Thank God we had him everywhere. Sure enough, God told me it was true. Because as I walked just down the other road to the end of my subdivision, there was a fence that went to another neighborhood. These real wealthy people. And he's up there on their back porch, and she's feeding him all this good food. And she actually wanted to keep my dog. I almost let her, too. <laughs> but there was nothing like it when I found my dog again and there's absolutely nothing like it when you find God again all of a sudden where I'd been so weak and beat down the first thing that happened to the prodigal is when he returned he didn't return as nobody, he returned in power. This is my message to your church, to the church, and to your life tonight. He, when he returned to the Father, he returned in power. God said to him, "Put a ring on his finger. That's his authority. That's the power. That's the authority and the power of God. And put a robe on him." He wasn't ever beat up. God never said a word to him in top. He never asked him where he'd been or where he'd gone. He's not going to say that to you. Religious devils will. Religious people might. But I want you to know that immediately, it wasn't the next day or the next hour, it was immediately when he returned, he was restored back to where his proper position was. And that's the God you and I serve. When you return to God in this hour, there'll be power that you've never had because you're going to have to have that power. You're going to have to know. Jim always says it, but I'm going to take it deeper. You're going to have to know who you are. And you're going to have to stand your ground. My God, I give Him all the glory for this word because I understand immediately when He returned, God said, I'm going to give it back to you and even greater than what you had it before. Because that's the way God is. People in the church, religious people, a lot of times say, "Well, what's he doing back here?" You know, what, what, how, how did that happen? Uh, well, how did they get that? It ain't got nothing to do with us. No, how? It's just the blessing and the mercy of God that does it in all of our lives. Gillis is right. There's no big eyes, little me's. God doesn't love you or me uh, any more than anybody. He loves us all the same. That's the great thing about God. His word is alive tonight. Well, somebody help me preach. He's alive. He is not a dead God. He said, I'm going to come and meet you on the way. A lot of times you don't have to make but one step towards God. It won't take maybe but one prayer. It may not. It may be the next prayer you pray. Don't you quit. God could hear him coming before he ever got there. Hallelujah, that's our God. Wow, glory, I feel God. Yeah, he was looking for him because he'd already heard his heart cry. God hears you tonight. Not only does God hear you, I want you to know that He knows who you are. Aren't you glad? Aren't you thankful tonight that God said, He belongs, my God, I feel God now. He belongs to me. He is my property. 
And I'm not going to leave him in this world to die. 